Hello, this is Retro Markey. Time for an unboxing and look at this little device here. This is the ZX slash SAM ROM cartridge from Quasar or Quasar. Sorry, that rings a bell. Hmm. Just a moment. Tell that stupid smegging cardboard hat I'm wearing! I'm trying to decipher this! This is science, laddie! You can smirk, Lister, but I believe the Quagars! Quagars? Quagars! It's a name I made up, double A, actually. <laughs> I believe the Quagars have the technology to give me a new body. Okay, close enough. It's not Quagar, it's Quasar. I'm going to stop now. So let's have a look at the little instructions first. Nice little package arrived today, and it's raining, so good timing. So this is an amateur product, I don't mean that in a derogatory or bad way, I just mean that it's not from a big corporation, it's from this chap who makes mostly stuff I think for the Sam Coupe, but also for the ZX Spectrum in this case. So you might recall that I did a video a while back with lots of bad focusing about this cartridge here. Now they're quite similar in the sense that they both enable the Spectrum to load ROM images that you to some extent make yourself. The difference with this one is you need a serial connection and an interface 1 which I happen to have but you do need an interface 1 plus an interface 2 they need to be working and you might require a lot of problems with some serial port connections. I did get there in the end but it was not something plug and play or easy if uh, you're not so technical. So I've got my trusty Swiss Army knife in case someone in invades the country. In the meantime though, we'll use that to unbox. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a little bit of history there which is really nice. I like the personal touch. So basically this enables you to have 16 different ROM banks. And we've got various instructions, the addresses of the different banks, etc, etc. And he does create some other devices, uh, such as an equivalent modern um, one of those. Found a lot about the Sam Coupe. And there is a couple of games on here, I believe, preloaded, that don't break any copyright. So what I'll probably use it for though is to put diagnostic software on and a few games of course, some of my favourites. Um, so let's have a look at the actual unboxing, nice little box there. So it comes in some nice bubble wrap, uh, anti-static bag with another label. And some contact info. All very professional. Put your knife away, kids, for safety reasons. And there it is. Quite cute, quite small. So it has a an EEPROM here, which I'll have to program on my EEPROM programmer. And this is to select the 16 banks. It's quite a stiff switch, but that's okay. And um, we've got two dip switches here, but these are only for really the SAM coupe. So Spectrum we need to make sure it's in read only because we can't write with that. And we need that on 16K Spectrum, not 32, because the Spectrum can't read more than 16K ROMs on the bus. Yep, very well soldered, very professional, very nice. Quite nice to have a different colour scheme as well. So what will happen is this will plug in here. Just make sure the pins are nicely lined up lined up. There we go. So quite nice actually. I'd probably be tempted not to move those switches when it's plugged in because you'd be forcing yeah. And there we go. Okay, so um, now we need to try out. Okay, so first thing is obviously first. Oh, I had a bit of a problem. I couldn't find my Commodore 16 or Spectrum power supplies. I looked everywhere. 
So I've actually wired up the spectrum to my bench meter here. Uh, the interesting thing is we can see what ampage the machine takes. So let's power on. So we've got 9 volts and 0.743-ish on there. That's the spectrum without any peripherals. Now let's do the same thing with the interface 2 and the new cartridge. So I've got 0.76-ish, something like that. Now I know you can't see the screen but I'll just quickly start the game. See the voltage goes up a little bit. Uh, not the voltage, sorry, the current. I keep saying voltage. Voltage, current. Voltage, current. So current is now nearly at 800 amps. Um, now I'm actually moving the character, playing the game. It's going up a little bit. I mean, it's recommended you have a 2 amp power supply for this. Um, or I would say 1.5 to 2 but this is obviously way down so it's not the best way of powering your spectrum but it's just quickly so I can make this video talking of which let's get on with that okie dokie let's have a look at actually what comes on the ROM so this is Meg the Magician which is a legal homebrew I think Don't know if we can what the controls are exactly, but uh, it does work. So it's good to see the device actually working. You can see the square. Maybe you can't, but the screen has got some interference because of my power supply. It is a cheap bench power supply, so that's pretty much what I expect. And um, I don't recommend that I've wired it up here at home. I've just basically got a jack and um, two crocodile or alligator clips, I can never remember which is which and um, I wouldn't normally use my spectrum like this so as soon as this video is made I am not using this again I will be finding my power supply okie dokie and here's the next one called Dead Space actually with the interference on the screen that looks really cool same controls, O, P, Q, A don't know if there's any other buttons it actually looks like my cup of tea. Yeah, mysterious alien ship jobby. Like it. Okay, okay, some stuff going on there. Can I do anything with this? I don't know. I don't know what the controls are, but uh, that's on the second bank. And I believe the other 14 banks are just a little graphical demo program just to show that it's working so we'll have a look at one of those and then I'll look at programming the EEPROM and this is another random bank um, so it just shows basically that it's working and functioning but obviously there's nothing on there so um, okay I need to put some stuff on there like some diagnostic software so I'll be back after I've done that okay one thing I haven't factored in is I've never actually removed one of these EEPROMs before. Normally I use 27C512 and similar which are the big ROMs like this and I used my one of these to pull out which is not going to work with this uh, but it looks like there's four holes on either side I think I have to be really careful with this, but it should just pop out, I think. I even googled this, but I couldn't find anything online. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's not quite as delicate as I thought. Okay, so that's this little tiny EEPROM. See how small it is? Let's see if I can program it. Okay, so I've ordered my adapter. That's going to take probably a couple of weeks with this COVID nonsense going on. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, it works just fine. And it'd be, be a nice little project to program a, a different kind of EEPROM. So what I can do is in the meantime is um, make up a folder with the 16 
well I'll, I'll leave the ones on there so 14 ROMs that I want probably two or three diagnostic ROMs and a few of my favourite games and things like that so sorry for the disappointing ending we'll have to do a part two at some point when I get this um, sorted out I uh, did want to mention as well so the two alternatives to this are that one that I did a video on before which um, I highly recommend as well that comes from Paul Farrow F-A-R-R-O-W from fruitcake.plus.com this one comes from the Quasar Quasar people and this one, I can't remember where I got this one now, but this one uses an SD card, it's probably and dip switches. And it's also around a similar price, about 20, 30 pounds. This was 20 pounds shipped. I think that was about 25, and that was about 25, 30. All three are recommended. Probably, um, like I said in my other video, that's the easiest to use because you use an SD card. Followed by one of these, but obviously this one you need an EEPROM programmer and an adapter in my case. And this one you're going to need to use serial connection to your PC, which through USB is not the easiest thing to do. And you'll need a ZX interface 1. So probably that one is the best one for just getting and using. And these two are slightly more fiddly, but uh, interesting nevertheless. So thanks to the guy at Quasar, I can't remember your name, oh Colin, Colin Piggott at Quasar for sending me that and um, I'll see you in my next video. Richard Markey, out. You can smirk, Lister, but I believe the Quagars. Quagars? Quagars! It's a name I made up, double A actually. <laughs> I believe the Quagars have the technology to give me a new body.